Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this week we're going to look at how you can use a palette knife in your acrylic painting to really get some nice texture in there, get rid of that fear of starting your paintings and get some really lovely results between mixing the palette knife and your brushwork. We'll also be looking at how even if you've got quite a dull image to start with you can use your artistic license and start to add some brighter colours in to really get a feel of adding colour into your pictures, even if the reference photograph or what's in front of you isn't as bright as you want. So what I've got here is a coloured ground which is made from a mix of raw umber and titanium white and I've mixed that into quite a mid-tone and I just gesturally painted it onto the board. I don't know if you can see, but here there's this texture that's underneath the actual board. So if you're just starting with acrylics and you don't want to spend a lot of money on canvases, just using some of these boards can be a really great way to experiment. And especially when we're working with a palette knife, what will happen is that when we put the palette knife on, it will give a resist, it will resist us pressing onto it, so you won't get that kind of bagginess that you can sometimes get with canvases. So just looking at the drawing that I've got here, I'm working one on one so this can really help because what you can do is jump your eye between the subject that you're working from and the actual painting that you're doing. So I'm just looking for any key points. Um, it's quite a dark image so I'm not worried about much detail, it's just getting those few key angles of the rooftops. And notice how a lot of these edges where I've got a white edge or a light edge and I've got a dark shape next to it. This is really going to be helpful in the painting because it will start to bring that building out because of the contrast of having the dark next to it. Also notice how there's these little white areas here of the reflected light from the sky. It's giving these little white dashes. Again, it's getting that nice contrast in the scene. So if this was a black and white image, it would still work well. These areas of white, if you notice how there's a white area on the top of this roof here, it jumps your eye to there and then jumps your eye to here and then jumps your eye right to the top. So there's this nice little flow that sends your eye very, very subtly through the piece in the actual tones that are in there. So you don't need to get a super accurate drawing, it's more about just getting some lines down so we can get painting and get used to using more paint than you might be comfortable with. If you're coming to acrylics from watercolour or even oils, with watercolour and oils you can use a very small amount of paint and it can go quite a long way, but with acrylics you can really afford to Put your acrylics on quite thickly and they'll dry so quickly it will still work very well for your painting. Okay, that's great. So the first thing I always like to do is to put in the darks and for this painting I'm going to use burnt umber. So I'll just take this out of the way so you can see my colour mixes as I go. And the brush that I'm using, I'm just going to be using these two. I'm using one brush, which is a filbert brush. This is uh, for oil painting. It's just a black hog brush from Jackson's Arts in the UK. What I like about it is that it's got quite a fine point to it. So for any of these little angles in the building, I can get quite good details, even though it's quite a large brush. And also the palette knife that I'm using, sometimes called painting knives, it's got an angle to it, it's got a diamond shape. And I really like this because it means that when I'm mixing, I can scrape the paint right off of the palette. And it also means that when I'm painting angles, it's very easy to get angle shapes in. And I just find it's a really, really nice size. This is from RGM and this is a size 45. And I use this for most of my paintings for this sort of scale. I think it works really well. If you have some of the smaller palette knives, sometimes you can get a bit fiddly with them. I think it's always better to start with a bigger palette knife and then you know, get used to 
kind of putting it on and getting details with the tip of your palette knife rather than thinking that you have to use a smaller palette knife every time. So to start with when I've got dark areas just to kind of get used to working with the palette knife to put paint on if you notice how I kind of roll it so it's on that one edge and then what that means is that I can kind of press in with that edge I'm just scanning the picture with my eyes and I'm just looking for those real darkest darks. So if you're trying to get an angle like that, you've just got to get used to kind of turning your palette knife around just so you can really you know get into the shape. I've gone a bit over the line there, so don't worry about using your finger just to correct a bit. And some darker areas on here, but what I'm now going to do you swap to the brush, just put those in, still with this burnt umber, but with a bit more of a watery mix. So I just dip my brush in some water, just off of uh, camera, I've just got a pot of water that I just intermittently dip my brush into. You see how this appears a different tone because I'm applying it thinly. What happens is it gives the undertone of that paint colour. So all colours have a mass tone and an undertone. So if you look here with the burnt umber, its mass tone is this very dark brown, and this undertone is still a brown, but it's a lot lighter and a lot warmer. So a touch more water. So when I know this area is lighter, it's got more of a yellow kind of base to it. I'm just brushing it in like blocking it in but I'm having it slightly more watery than this layer here so I'm trying to vary as much as I can but I'm still just using one colour And because I've got these thick bits that I've put on with the palette knife, if I need a bit of dark, I can just grab it from the actual painting rather than going back to my palette. So I like you know, some of these shapes that are happening here, 
But if on the top bit it feels a bit hard, you can just swap to your brush and you can just kind of feather that edge out so you soften it out. What I'm doing is I'm using the side of the brush, you can see how it's got that angle to it, and I'm just kind of making a circular motion and it just scrubs it in. Okay, that's great for just this burnt umber. Now I'm going to add some white so I can start to get those real bright highlights so we can start to judge our tones within the painting. So now I've got some white, I'm just going to wash out this brush and I just take most of the paint off on a bit of kitchen roll and then just kind of really rub it around into the water. And then soak that off on the kitchen roll as well and you see that's practically got nothing in it anymore, no pigment is left in there. So just make sure that you really soak the water out of that brush because it will just dilute it otherwise when you come to put on the white. A quick word about white, the white that I'm using is an artist quality white and it's a titanium white. This is the most opaque white you can get and it's so handy because you can really cover over the actual pigments and the colours that are underneath it. If you're using a student grade white, you'll notice a big difference in what you can or can't cover over with it. It's one of the best investments you can make in your painting, just to invest in some artist quality white. It's a very fine line in the distance, but I'm painting again quite thickly. And then this area here on the actual um, sky is quite light, so it's not going to be completely white, but just so I can get an idea of the tones that are there, I'm just going to kind of wash in some of that white. So I'm leaving it quite watery where it hits the line of the other mountain because I don't want it to build up too much in case I have to blend it in. That's great. And I can start to judge if there's any other bits I just want to tweak. I'm going to go a bit darker here. So I can really push that contrast with this white and the and the dark brown. That's looking great. So the next step is to add in some of the greys that I've got here on the building. So I won't be able to do that with the burnt umber because that's just going to give us a muted brown. So I'm going to add a blue so we can start to make a cooler colour. 